All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Eric Loftus, and I would like to welcome everyone to the Wealth Dimensions webinar, Not All Financial Plans Are Created Equal. At Wealth Dimensions, we pride ourselves on our approach to every financial plan and the detailed analysis that results. Many firms claim to provide financial planning, but oftentimes their process is really just a sales tool to gather assets and sale, sell products. We take a slightly different approach, employing a detailed, deep dive, cash flow based financial planning process. We use the financial plan as the basis to help you make informed decisions and identify additional tax and savings strategies. We believe every financial plan should incorporate three important components. It should be client-centric, comprehensive, and collaborative. Today, our team will walk you through three important stages of our process and how we deliver the most value to, to clients. I will be joined today by Eric Smith, our Director of Financial Planning, and Doug Loftus, one of our founding members and principals. Uh, for those of you who know Tom Curdy, he, our other founder, he planned to be on the call today, but uh, he is actually in Atlanta celebrating the birth of his first grandchild. So uh, congratulations, Tom, and I hope you're enjoying the time with the family. Uh, one quick disclosure before we dive into the presentation, we will be walking through some examples in this presentation for illustrative pur purposes and to show the complexity of our financial planning process and technology. We encourage you to meet with an advisor to discuss your specific circumstances and financial goals. Now I'm going to pass it off to Doug, who will discuss how our financial planning process has evolved through the years and then dive into our discovery process. Great, Eric, thanks. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I get to talk about probably one of the, my favorite uh, pieces of our financial planning process and our, our service offering here at Wealth Dimensions. Um, you know, we, we've built our firm on the basis of a financial plan drives decision-making. Uh, and we've talked about that to many of you who are currently clients uh, and, and to others that have interest in the firm. I'm gonna talk about uh, how the process works, uh, why we do it the way we do it, and a little bit of the history that, that I've seen in my almost 40 years in the business now. Um, we believe that building a good financial plan requires a deep dive into the details. Uh, as, as Eric mentioned, um, in our industry, a number of people uh, simply do a calculation based on uh, average monthly expenses or annual expenses, an average rate of return, uh, and an average tax rate, and they it basically gives you a directional uh, a directional idea of where you're going, but really isn't detailed enough to provide um, good decision making uh, data. So we've built a process on a very deep dive. We've done this for 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 many years, obviously technology has advanced over time, which has allowed us to do more and more and more and make it a more collaborative process. Uh, we believe there's a deep convergence of the qualitative aspects of your planning in addition to the quantitative. So one of the things that we spend a lot of time on is our discovery process. And uh, that is an interview. Some of you uh, who been clients for a long period of time, the qualitative aspect of this comes from a long relationship where we understand your interests, your values, what's important to your family, how you want to impact your family, your community. Uh, but those are really important dynamics of your uh, financial plan. The other part of it, and uh, Eric Smith, our director of financial planning, will talk about some of the quantitative aspects and how we, how we collect that information. The quantitative is items like income, uh, assets, uh, tax returns, more numbers based. Uh, and, and the importance of the qualitative is that when we merge quantitative with qualitative, the information is, is more meaningful, a plan is more meaningful, uh, and it lands in a way that it's within a client's value system so that they can make decisions consistent within uh, the values of their own family. And we spend a fairly significant amount of time in the process. And for some clients, as I introduce the process, it's kind of like a couch session. We want to understand where you came from, uh, where you are today, the values you grew up with, what your uh, thoughts are around money, how those, how those concepts developed, 
where you'd like to spend your time, uh, where you are spending your time, how you'd like to impact your family or your community or your church or anyone else around you. And then what are the most important parts of the future? Uh, are, be it retirement, uh, be it purchasing homes, whatever goals and milestones uh, that you wanna set forth moving forward. So the plan starts with a current, a discovery, uh, the discovery process, then we build a current state analysis, uh, and then we start working forward from there, which we'll look at at the, at this, the last section of this uh, seminar. Uh, one of the things I wanna talk about is the resources that we have available and how this process uh, has evolved. So over time, um, I got into this industry actually in the early 1980s, writing software and running software uh, to do calculations and to help people in a rudimentary sense, uh, do the type of analysis to look at the things they can control. We're all faced with several components to the future financial success. Uh, many of those things we can't control. Uh, those are things like the rates of return in the market. Uh, we can't control what the stock market does. We can't, you can't. We can't control interest rates. We're seeing a rise in interest rates right now. So we're going from what has largely been zero interest rates for the last, since 2009, almost 13 years, we've been in a very low interest rate environment. We're now seeing the recurrence of inflation. Um, and so inflation is a new component and we don't control that. And so far the Fed hasn't been able to control that as much as it is, is their job. Uh, so those are things we can't control in a financial plan. What we can control is risk assessment. Uh, we, can help, we can help with advice around how to minimize taxes. Uh, we, can, can, we can help with a sustainable uh, lifestyle. And more importantly, when the environment changes, uh, we can help direct and give you advice as to changes you may need to make in order to be successful and maintain financial security. Uh, and and there, will be there will be stumbles. I mean, in my 35 plus years, uh, you know, we've been through um, high inflation. When I entered the industry in the, in the early 1980s, we had 13% inflation. We had mortgage rates at 14.5%. Most people uh, younger than me don't even realize that you can have interest rates that high. Um, so those are things that that change over time. We've had market crashes in 1987. We had a war in 1990 in Iraq. We had a almost entire global meltdown in 1998. Uh, we had 2000 to 2003 when we had the dot-com bust and the markets fell. We had another one in 2007, eight and nine when real estate fell apart. Um, and those are all speed bumps along the way. It's, it's always a journey uh, and we have to adjust. And so part of our planning process is to do it in, in a high level of detail uh, so that we can actually create actionable decisions. And um, as we've moved through the years over that long period of time, uh, the tools have gotten better. Um, when I started this process and I was in Eric, Smith's job uh, many years ago, um, a client would bring in checkbooks and credit card statements and paper tax returns, and we'd get a box of stuff, and then we would sit down and we'd go through it, and we'd try and assemble information. Uh, today, technology-wise, makes that, A, much more simple uh, in that you can actually connect accounts, and Eric will talk about that in, in his data collection uh, section. We can connect accounts to a dashboard so that um, it helps to va validate spending data and um, expense data. Uh, you can connect accounts to your own personal dashboard that we set up so that your information is dynamic on a daily basis. Uh, your, the information value of assets updates every day. Uh, and it allows us to act much more quickly and much more efficiently, quite honestly, from our perspective, uh, because the data is at our fingertips in a much more friendly way. In addition to that, we have a vault uh, so that interchange of information is no longer bringing in a box of information. You can drag uh, documents right into your vault and they're shared with us and we can work forward from there. So we have a lot of a, a new uh, capabilities. We continue to stay 
I would say at the cutting edge of technology, uh, we've always tried to stay there. Some of you will have seen um, the, the uh, information and the pages and the reports we're gonna look at, uh, but, but some of you haven't. Um, and so we would encourage you in a period of time like we're in now where there's a lot of change, uh, the stock market has um, struggled since the beginning of the year. Um, inflation rates are up. Uh, so, you know, it's more expensive to go to the grocery store. It's more expensive to fill up your gas tank. Uh, those things impact your quality of life and your cost of living. So we want to make sure that those are um, embedded in your plan and you have clear visibility into any changes that you might have to make uh, in order to maintain the success of your plan over time. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, again, to us, this is a critically important element of our process. Uh, it, it allows us to um, guide you, provide you advice. Obviously, any decision that our clients make are solely their own. Uh, we're here to provide guidance and information to help you uh, in the decision-making process. Um, so with that, um, I'll turn that over to Eric Smith and he can kind of talk about where we go next after we uh, do the discovery process. Thanks, Doug. And, and as you said, the, the key foundation of the next phase of our process in the data gathering is, is that good data is the foundation for good decision making. And so as we work through the phases of a financial plan and helping our clients gather the data, you can see from this list here, there's a, a wide range of items and, and pieces of information that we look for in order to help create a comprehensive present state analysis. That gives us the foundation that we feel is the best way to approach decision making. And so what will happen traditionally or what has happened for some of you traditionally is we've had the discovery meeting and then you'll receive from one of our advisors or one of our planners a, a list of information. And that information to us is, is critical. And, and really it's the first step of the collaboration. We need collaboration from the clients in order to share all of that information. I often say you wouldn't go to the doctor complaining of chest pain and only let them look at your left foot. It's the same situation for us. We feel that to truly have the, the appropriate impact and, and provide great guidance, we need full access to all of the aspects of our clients' financial lives. And so you can see many of the things here we'll reach out for them initially and, and we'll go back and review and evaluate and you'll get clarifying questions and, and we might find other pieces of information that that leads us to. And, and the goal is to, to really develop a true understanding of your financial situation so we can start moving towards the action items and the recommendations that you'll see Doug walk through in, in the final section here. And so what are some of the things that we can do or what are some of the things we look for? Certainly tax strategies, having accurate information about our, our clients' investments, where they're located. We have the ability to then look at the appropriate withdrawal strategies years down the road. How do we tax locate? What are some of the advantages that you can, can look to utilize in future years with the ability to project based on real, true, accurate information? You know, Doug mentioned the need for detail is is what really drives that. We can dig into what is your charitable planning? What are some of the other things that you're looking to do gifting wise? What's the structure of your businesses and rental income, things of that nature? Do you have a stock options plan? What do those awards look like? How do we model those into the future? And, and ultimately, how do we make sure that we have a clear picture of all of those items and help our clients understand the impact that the decisions they make both today and in the future will have on their long-term outcome. For us, it is that, that attention to detail, that search for clarity that really truly provides the best framework to, to guide those decisions and, and to give appropriate feedback. It's an invaluable part of, of how we provide guidance and it certainly is a, a precise, much more precise way of doing it. You know, Doug, you mentioned the other day, the differences in the approaches navigating to Texas by going south versus navigating to Texas by having turn by turn GPS. You know, there's a, a very measured difference in those outcomes. And so another key thing that we focus on is cash flow needs and, and lifestyle goals and the sorts of things that you want to achieve and accomplish over the years. We dig into detail. That is one of the key areas. And, and frankly, it's one of the areas that many people aren't quite certain on. They either understate or, or 
overstate or, or just frankly miss on what they need in order to support their lifestyles. And certainly inflation is, is present for all of us in, in today's age. And, and we see it each, you know, every time we go to the grocery store and fill up our gas tanks and, and understanding what you need in order to support your lifestyle, to be successful, to, to live the life that you desire is a huge part of this. And so this slide is just an example of the detail that we work through in order to get a, a comprehensive understanding of our clients' cash flow needs and how imperative that is to helping them make decisions. Doug mentioned the, the software, you'll see some examples of that in, in future snapshots. The ability to actually link real data to these plans is, is invaluable to us. As he said, the days of bankers boxes and sorting through checkbooks and, and old statements have largely gone by the wayside and have been replaced with real data. And, and that is so impactful in the quality and the clarity of the planning that it allows us to do. We are adamant that this is the, the way to dig into a situation and, and big fans of getting that actual live data. It just is so impactful. And so using that, looking at each individual expense, assigning inflation rates, utilizing inflation rates that, that may be different for different unique items, certainly healthcare expenses we, we know are more, insurance premiums, things of that nature. The details, we wanna dig into that and, and provide a, a great framework. And, and so by doing all of that, working through all of these items and, and being persistent sometimes on our side, but thorough certainly, is, is a great way to build a foundation, that rigorous analysis. It helps us evaluate purchasing a home, college planning, retirement timelines. You know, when do I retire? When, when should I retire? What sort of lifestyle can I have in retirement? Those are all tied back to the, the quality of the data and the foundational nature that it has in, in our process. And so once we get through that current state analysis, once we, we have a really good understanding of, of where, where you are, where our clients are, it really helps us leverage those future decision makings and, and allows us to bring clarity and peace of mind in all scenarios. Certainly, as Doug mentioned, when, when you're having adverse inflation and market environments as we are now, that, that decision making foundation is key to the way we do that. And, and so that being said, I'll, I'll hand it back to Doug to walk you through a little bit of what that quality data allows us to prepare and present as it relates to evaluating decisions. Thanks, thanks, Mitty. Real quick, one quick point is if anyone has any questions throughout this presentation, please feel free to submit it in the Q&A and uh, we'll address as many as we can uh, at, the, at the end. Go ahead, Doug. Great, yeah, thanks. So, so and, and just to, to reinforce a couple things that, that Eric said, um, you know, when we do a financial plan, uh, it is not just us doing the work. There is an investment in time uh, for, for our clients and, is and, and probably one of the single greatest areas is around cash flow uh, for, for clients. Um, there can be an awareness factor uh, that comes in the process uh, because we're actually sitting down and accounting for where cash flow goes. Um, and Eric, if you would back up one slide for a second here. Uh, so when, when Eric builds out the expense structure here, each item in, in the client uh, expense structure will, will be detailed. So, you know, we project, we will project, you know, grocery spend, but, uh, you know, what, what your automobile insurance costs, what your utilities costs, what's it take for cable television? And um, th that, that sounds like a, a really um, uh, arduous task. And, and quite honestly, it is. But we also have tools. So for those people who choose to use it, uh, one of the most productive tools that we have is on, the, on a, a client dashboard that we set up for everyone uh, that wants to utilize it. And on there, clients have the ability to connect their credit cards, their bank accounts, and your and transactional data will actually populate so that when we start a plan, if someone connects uh, a credit card and a bank account, um, all of the inflows and outflows, and actually up to in some instances 18 months of prior data, will populate, and our system will go through 
and it will categorize. If you go to Shell gas station, it's gonna put that in the gas column. If you go to Kroger grocery, um, it will, uh, if you go to Kroger's and, and you buy groceries, it'll put it in the grocery column. If you go to Bravo's to have dinner, it'll put it in restaurants and dining. Um, and so that system right off the bat, when that stuff downloads will be about 80% correct. Uh, then what our team will do is go through and that system is a learning system. So we can go through and for items that don't fall in the right categories, uh, Eric's team will go through and we'll categorize it and we'll tell it if uh, if United Dairy Farmers comes down, uh, for those of you that are in the greater Cincinnati area, uh, we can put it in a category and we can look and say, hey, you know what, here's a $36 expense from United Dairy Farmers, they're probably getting gas at UDF uh, near their home. We can then push that into the gasoline column. Uh, and so we, we, we go through that process and then on a going forward basis, um, as new transactions come in, it will categorize it. That is, that is a really powerful tool that allows us to validate the assumptions because when people have money coming in or they're, they have, uh, they're living off of expenses off of their assets, and they have money going out, we wanna make sure that we're calculating the appropriate amount of living expenses. And as Eric said, the number one item that we find where, we're, where, where, where this process isn't, isn't done or isn't followed um, is living expenses are underestimated. Because honestly, even I've been doing this for a long time, you know, I don't account for every dollar that I spend. And if I tried to figure it all out off of, you know, just out of, off the top of my head, um, it would be, I, I would do a, not a very good job. And I'm probably more adept at doing it than most. And, and so, you know, that's critically important because what it comes up with is the gap. And that is the most important item in a financial plan is where are the gaps? If, if when we look at what, the, the, the majority of the industry does, they'll say, okay, I need $6,000 a month to live. Okay, and I'm gonna have a 7% rate of return. And I'll explain assumptions in a minute. Um, and we'll have 3% inflation, right? That, that is in our world a wag. Um, and, and pardon my French, but it's a wild ass guess. Right. I mean, you cannot make a decision on generic assumptions of, of that sort. Um, we will go through the and we apply, for instance, when Eric is building out expenses, we know that Medicare and medical expenses go up at a rate faster than what utility bills do. Historically, 6% growth rate in CPI for medical expenses, 3% in utility costs. We have the ability, as you can see here, for instance, to assign a, an inflation rate or an indexing to each individual item in the expenses. And, and that's really, really important when we're building strategies out of how do we pay for healthcare expenses in retirement? Um, and, and each individual um, uh, expense in the process. Those produce quality outcome. The other part of it is it also helps us in making decisions around do we fund HSAs? How do we pay, how do we pay for expenses? A lot of people don't realize one of the most important and significant medical expenses in retirement is dental expenses. <laughs> That's one that usually blows up long-term plans. So I, I, I wanna reiterate the importance of the work that goes in on this end from both our part, but as well as the client side, um, simply because the better the quality of the data, as Eric said, the better the quality of the outcome. We're willing to do the work on our side. Uh, we wanna help control the things that we can control and we can help you uh, we, because we know there's a lot of things we can't control. As I said at the outset, we can't control interest rates. We can't control inflation. We can't control what the markets are gonna do up or down, right? Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. We can use an assumption. As the plans update, whatever did happen leaves us with an analysis with a little bit of updating to say, okay, what impact has that had? Uh, and we're in a period of time now where we think that that should be a process to go through with clients to say, okay, look, we're, we're in a changing period of time. We've got a snapshot now. 
let's take a look and see where the impact of the plan is. So next we're gonna step into what a plan would look like and kind of the rigor and I'll explain how we use it. So Eric, if you'd move forward. So many of you have seen this, um, that, that if we've done a, a recent update to a plan, but this is what the basic, what we'll call our decision center looks like. Um, this is a plan where we build your current state analysis. This is where you are today. And this is a look at your productive assets or portfolio assets that are producing your income in the future and building your net worth. It does not include in this snapshot the value of your home, the value of your car, the value of your any contents, because those are what we consider non-productive lifestyle assets. And it would be inappropriate to include those in this, in, in this uh, illustration. Uh, we build a current state analysis from here uh, with all of the data we've collected. And then we from here then have the ability to say, okay, strategically, what strategies can we employ and what impact will they have on the outcome of this projection? And again, we try not to bore you with pages and pages and pages of numbers because that can become overwhelming. Um, Believe me, I can bore in the best of them with numbers. <laughs> so I just try not to do it. So anyway, this is the base level of, of what the plan looks like. And then strategies and what if scenarios. I wanna buy a vacation home. I wanna sell a vacation home. I wanna retire at 60. I wanna retire at 65. I wanna look at a change in a job. I have to fund college educations for this period of time. I want to provide for state school. I want to provide for private school. Uh, we know that, for instance, the tax law, the tax changes that took place in 2017, they sunset on 12-31-2025, and the entire tax regime will change again, barring an act of Congress, to where we were prior to 12-31-2025. To, to 2017. So what we can do is we can flip on and we can look at, okay, this is what happens if all of that tax sunsets and we go back to where we were. And this is what happens if it, if Congress extends it to give you visibility because in at, behind each year of your tax of your projection is a full tax return. Um, so Eric, if you would step on to one. So what data are we looking at? So as Eric showed you how we collect data, we break expenses out into your basic living expenses. If you have loans such as a mortgage, a car payment, uh, whatever those are, we build those into the system and they will amortize and they will run off um, as, as they're scheduled. Um, if it is linked to your dashboard, it will actually update every time you make a payment to show what the current balance is on your financial statement. Um, other expense flows will include things like car purchases, uh, Medicare, Medicare premiums, college expenses, one-time expenses, home improvements, anything that's not an annually kind of recurring expense. And we can start and stop those on, on any given year. Um, in living expenses, we can define uh, pre-retirement, uh, semi-retirement, post-retirement, and we can use, you know, advanced age. A lot of times when a client turns, gets to their 80s, we know spending will not be the same as it is the first year of retirement, generally, uh, barring medical expenses. So this level of detail we like to build into the plan to give you visibility. In addition to that, it gives you visibility into, okay, if I do this today, what impact will it have on my outcome? And that is a piece of the planning process uh, that we think, again, is critically important to do this correctly. Um, and again, these are the things that we have some ability as, as individuals to control and helps us deal with those things that we can't control. Um, Eric, jump forward if you would. So this is a look, as I said, about other expenses, right? These are things that come and go, colleges, uh, Medicare, new car, um, this is not, we flip another page, Eric. Um, so as we get out, we, we don't run these. I didn't run you pages and pages of these, but these will run out. We generally use age 95 for life expectancy. Um, and as we, as we push out, again, 
we want to break these things down as they are going to naturally occur. Uh, in this case, you can see we've got college expenses. And, and in this sample case, we've got a 529 plan that was part of a strategy that was implemented early in order to deal with college expenses down the line with some tax preference. Flip again, Eric. Um, as, as we go through, one of, the, one of the major components of a plan is what I talked about is a gap, right? And, and in this case, we have income coming in. We have expenses going out as we build the plan. And one of the reasons we like to do this, this detailed exercise is we get to a number that says, okay, we know what resources someone has coming in. We know what we have going out in living expenses to some degree, right? If it's simply a generic number where we haven't, there hasn't been a rigorous process on the front end to say, what's it gonna cost me to live? And we just say, it's, you know, we will not do this unless you as a client indicate or the client indicates, hey, I want, just wanna use a number, right? We would like to get down to the detail, but what we come up with is, okay, now we've got income, now we've got expenses, what's the gap? Because if we have this gap, which is spend year-end savings, it says in this case, we have money that's unaccounted for. And if we, we have already built in in this process, we built in what contributions are being made to retirement plans, such as 401k elective deferrals, what money might be going into an HSA, other expenses that are already coming out, and we still have a gap. We've got taxes taken out, We've got all these components and we have this unaccounted for number. This is a key column or gap column. We have to figure out this money's either being saved, which if it's being saved, we can generally see it. <laughs> if not, it's being spent and it accounts for most likely living expenses or expenditures that are being that are not accounted for in the plan. And, and this is a very important part of the process. So um, I can't under under if you can't tell, I can't stress enough the importance of the cash flow component of, of this plan. Uh, go ahead and jump forward, Eric. Um, one of the other things that comes into a plan, again, that we use very, very uh, detailed rigor is if you have a business, uh, if a client has a business, if a client has rental property, we want to make sure that all of that is properly reflected in a plan. So, when we put those in, we can put in your cash flows, we can put in expenses. If it's a piece of real estate, we would put in rents, we would put in related expenses borne by the, by the, by the landlord, um, we would put in depreciation schedules. And why is this stuff important? Well, at some point in the future, this is going to trigger a, a taxable event. Maybe there will be a liquidation of a property or the sale of a business. Uh, we want to make sure that when a tax return in the year of sale is prepared and built into your into your plan, that it is properly illustrated and calculated. It does no good to say you sold a property for four hundred thousand dollars if we're not calculating what the taxes do on that four hundred thousand dollar sale. So these are again critically important elements and attention to detail items that we like to to work through when we build a plan. Uh, I just worked through with a client a potential sale of a property uh, in 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 Hyde Park, um, and it's a it's a commercial property, and it it led to a decision of how much do I need to get out of this property in order to give me the equivalent long term cash flow of maintaining or keeping the property, and because that client has actually relocated. Uh, to another to another state in retirement, and they're deciding, do I want to be a landlord still in Cincinnati or not? And if there was enough economic value to staying a, a landlord, then they were willing to do it. On the flip side, if they could sell the property in a really strong real estate market right now, then it would make sense to go ahead and sell it. And again, we can plug that into the plan and show them the impact on the long term, on the long term uh, financial situation. Eric, jump again. Um, this is a detail of what it looks like behind the scenes, as I've mentioned several times, the use of a tax return. So each year, 
in a financial plan, we can look at, okay, what are the federal tax income taxes that have been generated? And, and there are multiple schedules behind here. I'm not going into the pages and pages of numbers. If we have capital sales um, from either portfolio or from uh, capital assets like real estate, that will plug in. We calculate other sorts of income taxes. You've got, so, you've got um, social security on earnings. You have um, Medicare taxes on earnings, as well as uh, Medicare taxes on um, unearned income now, on investment income uh, that, that is applied. All of those taxes are calculated behind the scenes. In addition to that, um, we've, we've already previously in, in the data entry calculated what your Medicare premiums will be once you go on Medicare. And if you're subject to the income related Medicare adjustment amount, which is a means testing for your Medicare premium, we've also estimated where that will be as best we can, who knows where Medicare will be 15 or 20 years from now. But we wanna make sure again, that there's rigorous detail behind every calculation in the plan. This is just a, a quick look at a breakdown of a particular single year on, on a tax calculation. Um, and again, if I were to simply take and say, okay, your average tax rate's 25%, that's not helping me at all to do or to provide advice around tax strategies. And these are things Eric mentioned, um, you know, do you do Roth conversions? Uh, do you fund HSAs? Do you do backdoor Roths? Uh, where do you hold assets? Do we hold assets that are in taxable accounts? Do we hold different types of assets in IRA accounts or Roth IRA accounts or 401k? That's called asset location. That's part of the portfolio construction that we do um, behind the scenes. So uh, those help again to, to um, provide the detail to optimize. These are things we can control, right? As we know, we can't control many things, but these are things we can control to optimize the decision. The other area that we spend a fair amount of time on, and I mentioned the IRMA, how your income is generated in retirement will have an impact on, on what you pay for Medicare. And if we start years ahead of time, by creating multiple buckets of income where, where we can, right? Not everybody is in that situation, but we can then build withdrawal strategies at retirement to make sure that we're avo avoiding uh, excess costs that are related to the generation of income in retirement. So there's a lot of moving parts in a plan, again, that, that um, we, want, we want to help with to help drive decisions and, and support your decision-making. Um, and, and again, here's just a, a multi-year look at, uh, at how we build the tax charts. Uh, so from here, the, the next piece of the equation is what happens when we've got all this data in there? It's, it's all built. And it all comes back here to a basic feasibility graph, right? And, and that is now we build what-if scenarios. We build... Um, Anything that, that a client can imagine. Generally, what we like to do in the process is we go through discovery, we go through data collection, we go through a current state analysis to say, where are you today? What are the basic things we talked about in discovery that are important? And then this becomes the decision tool, right? And we can build at any time if, if a decision arises, buy a home, sell a home, change jobs, retire, move out of state, help out kids, Whatever, whatever it might be, we can then plug that into, uh, over on the left, we have the ability to go in and what's called advanced planning. And from there, we can build unlimited number of scenarios to test and illustrate the outcome of different decision options. And again, that, under, that underpins everything that, that we do uh, and that we try and do with, with clients. So, uh, you know, we've been around, as many of you know, uh, Tom and I started this firm in 1985. Uh, we have clients that have been with us from day one um, uh, that, are, that are still with the firm. We have other clients that have joined us uh, in, the last, in the last couple of years. And so as we have 
many people in different stages of this process. Uh, part of the goal today is, is to encourage everyone, you know, when circumstances change, when your plan changes, when the market changes, when inflation crops up, uh, the goal is to revisit all of this, is to update your plan, uh, get, get visibility so that if changes are needed, if the market has had a negative impact on, on the, the last round of projections, understand where they are. And, and again, we can't control the things, many of the things that, that impact your plan, but there are enough things that we can uh, that make it important that we'd rather identify those today make changes today than, than not be aware. And all of a sudden, you know, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, it's, it's a non-recoverable situation. Um, so with that, that's, that's a rundown. I, I hope that, you know, this gives you some perspective. We also like to work where, where appropriate um, with your other, with other advisors. So in a lot of cases, we'll work with, um, with banking relationships, especially where there's real estate involved or there's businesses involved. We may work with, uh, we often work with um, uh, CPAs in, in constructing uh, the details of a plan uh, and providing feedback and collaborating. We are big, big believers in collaboration. Uh, what we didn't talk about in, in this discussion yet was an estate planning, right? All of this uh, also will we'll then build into an estate plan, and we can do estate plan projections, and that conversation is how do you want to impact those who are important to you in what ways? Uh, and it really also becomes part of the, the illustration because for, for those that want to leave their heirs, children in, in a lot of cases, in the best situation, we also may inquire and build in what tax brackets are your children in, right? Because if you pass all IRA assets to your kids, the laws just changed last year. And instead of having a lifetime for your kids to withdraw IRA assets, it has to come out in 10 years. Um, and so that changes tax dynamics. If, if you pass while your children are working, um, they may be in the higher in a higher tax bracket than you are. So the out, best outcome for your state may be to, to do a combination of early withdrawals and Roth conversions. Uh, and again, I'm getting in, into the weeds, so I won't, I won't go too deep there. But these are the types of decisions we like to help uh, to optimize your family situation uh, in the process. Uh, and part of that is, is estate planning. Where appropriate, um, we'll work with you know, insurance professionals, if, if there are insurance advisors, property and casualty, we want to coordinate to make sure you have adequate coverages. Um, you know, we have the appropriate umbrellas in place. Uh, when it comes time to move to Medicare supplements or Medicare Advantage or dr prescription drug plans, when you hit age 65, we want to make you're sure you're properly structured and understand all the moving parts when it comes to um, uh, appropriate long-term health care. Some of those decisions you make at 65 are largely uh, locked in then, right? So you want to make sure that those correct decisions are made, um, uh, you know, at the outset. Um, with that, I'll, I'll, I'll tie it up. Um, thanks for in, um, uh, in, engaging me, <laughs> listening to the, uh, the, the detail. You can tell we have a passion around financial planning here. Uh, you know, investments make the world go round. They, they make all of this possible, but it's largely we, we don't control those pieces. Uh, so, you know, we can put together an intelligent investment strategy for clients and we can do all of the smart things. Uh, but it is important to know where, where things stand at any given time and any, any other aspects of the financial plan that can be implemented or strategies that can be implemented to leave you uh, in, in the optimal situation. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to Eric, and I think he will uh, field some questions. If anybody's offered questions or, or, or comments, we'll get to as many of them as we, as we can um, with, in, the, in the few minutes we have left. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, we got about 10, 15 minutes to, uh, to wrap this all up. We'll try and end uh, a little early. Um, wanted to walk through, uh, first off, thank you for those who commented on chats and uh, expressed how much they liked the portal or the dashboard. I probably should have included a slide that showed the client side, what you see and what you have access to, where to link accounts, things like that. 
Uh, we will do that in future ones, but thank you for everyone who commented and, and, and appreciate that feature of the plan. Um, a couple questions I have uh, that have come in or that I would oppose to Doug is, um, one of them, which Doug, you answered quite a few, a, a bit of the, a bit of this in the in the presentation. Um, what types of what if scenarios can you project? Um, you, you answered that question. One thing I was going to do, and bear with me as I fumble through this uh, presentation. Um, one thing that is helpful for younger clients that I've found is a lot of times you'll see this chart grow, which is what you want it to see. But um, we do also have the ability to project, hey, what, is that, what does that chart feel like when you're projecting a 40-year-old at 95 years old and you see that mountain grow and you, it grows to 15 million? What does that feel like in today's dollars? Um, so we have this little, little tab, and I don't know if you can see my cursor. It's right in the, on the right side. We can switch to, from future value to present value. And what that does is it, is it allows you to show what that will feel like in today's dollars. So that's a really nice, nice uh, usually provides a lot of clarity for clients on that. Um, Doug, are there any other scenarios that we haven't mentioned that, um, you know, basically, it's basically unlimited, but any other ones that you wanted to point to? Yeah, no, I, you know, I think, um, you know, as you said, Eric, there, there's an unlimited number of uh, transactions. Um, you know, I'm thinking of life events, um, weddings, educations, retirement, purchasing a second home, uh, changing a job. Uh, then you get into tax strategies, as we discussed. There's there's a multitude of tax strategies. Some plans are fairly straightforward, where a client has you know where, where you have W two income, and there's not you know there's not a ton of of tax planning around that, other than maybe using employer provided retirement plans. Um, in other case, for a business owner, it might be you know throwing in a defined benefit plan on top of a retirement plan, and um, uh, which would allow you to put in you know in some cases 100 or 200 thousand a year into a retirement plan. So uh, we can build out multiple scenarios. Another one that we didn't touch on is you know, and we touch on this in our discovery meeting. What if I'm dealing with my parents and they're aging and I'm trying to factor in where that might impact my own financial security? Uh, or what can I do to help them? These are all things that we, we want to build into the plan. And, and for many of the people, I, uh, some of the people I know that are on here, um, we've worked with your helping you with your parents. We've actually worked with some of you, the parents and in, in, in getting uh, positioned in a way that will, will leave um, uh, them in the best situation. So uh, again, we we truly look at this as kind of a multi generational process in in many instances. Yeah, and I would just add very quickly on the the ability to do what ifs, the incredible ability that this tool has to be specific. So it's not a, a one time iteration. If you want to, you know, buy a new home, we can look at buying a home and selling it five years from now, or you know, what a stock options execution strategies look like in, in 10 years and those sorts of things. And it really is, is great leverage to review those what ifs as they change and, and make uh, iterations for the future to, to really give you a, a clear and concise picture. It's, it's a really neat way to do things. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. And really what this provides clients is clarity on the future. Um, so, you know, not every every decision you're going to make make is what adds to your pipe to your to your graph your mountain chart at the end the best the best decision is not always the best financial decision for you but arming you with clear information so you're not making those decisions in a vacuum you can see how it affects five years from now ten years from now ultimately what you leave as your legacy to your children or charities what might be you can see the impact of them and then make a decision together as a family um and it, Eric, can I, let me let me speak to one thing real quickly too, and 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 that is um, Eric uh, Eric Smith. You can you can um, identify with this. Um, some clients sometimes it's it's um, people are reluctant. Clients are reluctant to link their spending. Right it, there, there's a sense of wow, that's like I'm not sure I want to give that level of detail. And and I would compare this. Uh, I would compare this, you know, it, it really improves the quality of the data. And 
we are a judgment free zone, right? We don't care where you spend your money, that's your business. But we do really need it, we can do a better job for clients if we know and understand the real cash flow requirements. And um, so, you know, again, I, I, I think you, you would be amazed. I mean, it's no different than a doctor in health, right? I mean, you, you don't go to the doctor and not tell them, you know, what hurts, right? And, and so I, I want to reiterate, just as a comment, I've done this for a long time. And, you know, this is a, this is a, a, a judgment-free zone. We will do it based on if you want to work very rudimentary data. It's just that if, if I can get one piece across, one of the values of, of, and what I think is a differentiator in the work that we do, is the detail we're willing to go into and work with you on to get your plan as close to perfect, not perfect, it's never, as close to right as it can be uh, at, at any given time. Yeah. Awesome. And Another question that came in, um, you know, just had some clarifications on the assumptions. I know we've touched on interest rates, uh, inflation, pieces like that. Maybe touch a little bit on that, but more importantly, um, one of the assumptions that I, I question I had that maybe Doug, you can take um, uh, that we, we received is uh, on your investment return assumptions. Um, can you can you touch on that on uh, why why we project more conservatively than most people would assume? Yeah, so we try, again, these are assumptions over long periods of time. Um, and obviously we have to use some rate of return assumption. Um, we have chosen to use a, a net rate of return of 5%. And we've done that for a, for a long time. Um, and we see other people that run plans that at 7% or 8%, uh, you know, at higher numbers. And that does have a profound impact on this graph. Um, the reality of it is you want to try and be, um, as, as uh, my partner Tom will call it, um, optimistically pessimistic uh, and, and, or pessimistically optimistic. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. Um, we've, we've generally used a 5% rate of return and an inflation rate of approximately uh, slightly above three when, when you blend all the moving parts. Um, and we do that simply because we would hope that if the markets provide higher rates of return, the plan will look better. Um, we want to try and not overestimate. And a lot of, you know, people will challenge us on it. Well, wait a minute. You mean... 5%. And that is a projection. That's a number used in a projection. It's not necessarily a prediction of what a portfolio will do. There's no guarantee it will even do five, right? We don't, we don't know from 2000, from January the 1st of 2000 to 1231 of 2009, the S&P 500 lost one and a half percent per year for 10 years. So, so, you know, we don't know what the future holds. Unfortunately, there's nobody up on Wall Street reaching out to us and asking us whether the market should go up or down tomorrow. Uh, and, and so we, we, we have to use an assumption and we want people to understand that we're trying to, we're trying to be extremely reasonable, but we, again, can't guarantee the outcome. But one thing that does happen as we review and the future becomes history. Whatever did happen is updated in the plan and the projections reflect that. Awesome. Thanks, Doug. And, and we're coming close on time. I'll try and ask one more question um, and we'll be brief on this. What is the time commitment necessary to fully engage us in a detailed financial plan? From our perspective or from the client's perspective? I think this is coming from the, from the client perspective and, how quick, and then how quickly we can move things along. Yeah. So, okay. So let, I, I will try to do this quickly because I do understand we're, we're running tight on time. So if it's an existing client and we know a lot of the, di the discovery process, we've gone through the values conversation. Um, I have a couple of clients on here that have been, I've worked with for 30 years. So I have a pretty good understanding of their circumstances. Um, then, then, Cranking it out really from the client perspective, I would say uh, a discovery update meeting um, 
and a presentation meeting, um, maybe a little bit of interface in between. Um, I would say two hours in meetings, and I would say, you know, a solid hour in helping us get the data uh, that is required to update the plan or, or, um, or, or enter the, get the plan data. For a new, for a new client, um, for a new client, uh, I would say a, a solid hour to hour and a half uh, for a discovery meeting. That is a meaningful, that is a meaningful meeting. Um, and we want to give it the time it requires. We've got a process we've developed over 25 years, 30 years that, that we feel is very successful in, in getting at the information that we need. Um, because one of the things we encounter often is we're going to bring up topics in that in that meeting that husbands and wives haven't even talk, talked about, or, or they may not agree. Uh, so those are always fun conversations. Um, the So I would say an hour and a half there, um, an hour at the first meeting to about the same amount of time for data collection, maybe a little bit more, uh, an hour at the first meeting, and then an hour at a, at, excuse me, an hour at the second meeting and an hour at a third meeting. Um, over, uh, let's say it'll take probably a month in total to get from beginning to end in that process. Smitty, would you you feel a month is about yeah. two week intervals? Exactly, and, and we always often say that's where the collaboration truly comes in because if if we're able to receive the information we request back pretty quickly, we can move you know faster than that. And and so yeah, I think I think that's a reasonable time frame. And, and and let me say one thing, and, and I didn't hit this. I meant to hit this earlier when when Eric um, had up a sheet. You know, we talked about liabilities. We we track our clients' mortgages, right? So we know how much your how much is outstanding on your loan if it's connected, what your interest rates are, um, and when there's opportunities to refinance. It, it, in many instances, we'll reach out to you directly because we are working with. Um, the mortgage people in the area, um, and we know where, where very good rates are. We know who has great service. Um, and we consider it part of your financial plan. If we see an opportunity, we can run a report and say, okay, you know, obviously mortgage rates have been rising rapidly recently, but for 15 years, they were in decline. And we had clients we were reaching out and, and continually refinancing as rates went lower and lower and lower. And, and again, that's part of the value of having the data in the system for a client. We can do that. You don't even know that we're doing that. We may have told you we'll do it. You've forgotten <laughs> that we are doing it. But those are the types of things that we're tracking. We're tracking, you know, we're keeping track of your, you know, who your Medicare provider is, uh, your Medicare supplement. And you know, there isn't, there are many things that we help, whether it's, whether it is, um, uh, you know, we, we, we've done healthcare advocacy as part of a plan. We've done, you know, identifying long-term care facilities and nursing homes and independent living facilities and negotiating contracts for clients with, with um, uh, and understanding which option is the best if they move into an independent living facility. There's, there's lots of pieces of this that we can't cover in an hour. Um, I, I think the number one statement when we go through this planning process with clients that I probably get, um, and, and Eric and Smitty, you, they're both Eric, so one's Smitty and one's Eric, um, is I had no idea that anybody does all this. Um, and, and, you know, our goal with your financial plan, with your discovery process, is to have a deep understanding of what's important to you, the quantitative data to support the guidance, uh, and then to help you get the best outcome, achieve, as our tagline is, achieve what matters most, right? What's, what's most important to each and every one of our clients, we want that, that to be where, where, where they land. Thanks, Doug. And with that, I'll, uh, I'll start to wrap it up. Um, thank you, everyone, for the comments that you provided and the questions. There were a few of there that uh, we will address individually after this. Uh, but just want to thank everybody for coming. Please uh, give us feedback on if you're enjoying these webinar series, the, the videos, the blogs we're putting out as well on social medias. Um, if, if any of those are hitting home to you, please, please give us feedback on that. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you on the next one. And feel free to share and, and feel free to share any of our content. Yes.
Yes. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. All right, thanks, Paul.